Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. All right. Don't. Welcome to our presentations. Uh, we're starting off today, 2.15, uh, with the CPL 5.2. I'm... Yay! Okay. Um, and I'm just going to let them go forth. And Gwen is pointing at me about something. Can I make sure you're recording? Are you recording? There we go. I see a hand going. It isn't a root finger. Going, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got your recording. I got your right finger here. right here. All right. Anyway. So, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to turn over to CPL 5.2. So, uh, we're going to set the bar extremely high today. <laughs> so, it's all downhill from here. Um, so, uh, Director Craig, members of the Illinois State Library, instructors, mentors, apprentices, and fellow I leaders. On behalf of Team CPL 5.2, uh, we are happy for this opportunity to pre present our, pro our project, Keeping Tabs on the New GED. My name is Tony Powers, and my colleagues who will be presenting today are Will Sumner, Kimberly Hagen, Sarah Holtkamp, and Lynn White. Yay! So first, a little context about how this project came to be. Despite the fact that we work for the same institution, our jobs, our responsibilities, and the audiences that we serve are widely diverse. Some of us work at the Central Library as subject specialists. Some of us work in neighborhood services as either branch managers or children's librarians. So the challenge very early on in this process for us was to identify an underserved group of users that we all had in common. So it became very apparent from our early conversations on this topic or this challenge that one of the experiences that we had that we all felt um, bad about as professionals was the GED students and prospective students that came into our facilities looking for assistance in passing the GED. We all had the experience of having to turn these users away unsatisfied many times because of lack of, of materials, materials that through attrition weren't available anymore. So that was a motivating factor, this commonality. But we were also motivated by the fact that there's one of us has a personal story with the GED, one that you will soon learn about. Throughout the course of this whole process, we have been encouraged by the fact that um, the more we've become involved with this, the more we seem to hear mentions of the GED in media. As recently as September 21st, Chicago Tribune on its editorial page had an article entitled, A New Plan of Chicago, Healing the, Healing the City. And one of the 12 basic tenets, I kind of think of this as an act of uh, serendipity, one of the leading tenets for that plan was providing free GED access to the 1.3 million Illinoisans who don't, who don't possess a high school equivalency degree. So we feel like we're on the right track. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn the podium over to my colleague, Will Sumner, who's going to talk a little bit about the, about the new GED and um, relate to a personal story. Well, I get a lot of respect around here. <laughs> so uh, I am kind of an exception to our group. The others did have experiences with people coming up to the desk needing help with GED prep. I work in the art department and in, throughout my entire career, uh, I've never really had anybody ask me for that kind of help. But I do have an interest in the GED because I took it back in the late 70s. I uh, quit, dropped out of high school, had a full-time job. Um, and uh, at the time, now my memories are not entirely clear, but my memories are that I, I didn't study for it. Um, I don't remember having spent a lot of money on it. And I think it took a morning filling in those little uh, circles, multiple choice circles with the pencil, if you guys remember that. Uh, the creature that we have experienced now with the 2014 GED is very different. Um, it is much more difficult. 
Uh, it is much more expensive, and uh, it takes a lot more time. Uh, I think uh, my GED was uh, really for the purposes of showing that I had the equivalency of a high school diploma. This new GED really shows that someone is ready to go to college or work in a more sophisticated workplace, a workplace that we are rapidly heading towards. Um, some of the differences. Uh, currently, uh, it is only administered on computer, so if you're not familiar with that interface, you are at an immediate disadvantage. Um, it uh, is composed of five modules that last a qu approximately uh, a total of eight and a quarter hours to take. It costs $120. So it is a major commitment. Um, it's more difficult. So uh, you're going to have to study systematically in order to pass it. I honestly feel that it, unless I studied very systematically, I'm, I wouldn't be able to pass it now. Uh, we feel that the, the challenge of this is not, uh, we don't have enough, uh, just passing out uh, uh, books, study books, study guides is enough to meet this challenge. So what we think should be done is uh, a little bit broader, uh, accomplished with laptops, uh, loaded with e-books of course, but also with a guide that steers people towards the free re resources on the web, the free courses offered by the city colleges, and our own resources, including BrainFuse, which is uh, frankly quite amazing if you take a look at it if you can. Um, now Lynn will talk about our, uh, a guide that's going to be on the laptops. So we asked the question, what can we do? And we can do what librarians do best. We can gather the best free online uh, uh, GED resources. We can put those resources, load them onto individual laptops. And we can make those laptops available to our patrons at all locations in the Chicago Public Library system. So with the grant money, we purchased laptops, we purchased laptop accessories, and GED test prep books. Then we created our GED interface. We used four criteria for creating the GED interface. The, G, the websites on the GED interface must be free. The websites on the GED interface must be available all the time, 24-7. And the design of the GED interface must be simple enough so that any librarian with no <coughs> special skills or of special equipment or special software can replicate the GED interface or customize it using local GED resources. And last, the GED laptop must be easy to use. So our patrons click, click, um, simply click a go button and it takes them right to the GED resources. So if you would like to create a GED laptop for your own library, simply contact us and we will assist you. But if you like to know what our patrons and our community advisors feel about our GED laptop, Kim is here to give you the reaction. Thanks, Lynn. Can you guys hear me? I don't know if I'm talking. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so after we developed our GED laptop, uh, we needed to test it out on users. So in order to collect a consistent amount of data, we created a user experience form. This is a basic form that collects the patron's background information, uh, their computer skill level, and their reasons for wanting to take the GED. After creating this tool, we used our community representatives to connect with potential GED test takers in the Chicago community. I worked with two users from the Clio Center, a community life center, and the Garfield, Washington Park area of Chicago. The Clio Center provides services like youth counseling, food pantries, and domestic violence advocacy. 
This is Christina. She is a 39-year-old mother of three who wants to earn her GED degree to become a CNA and then eventually a nurse. Christina has actually taken the GED twice before, but unfortunately, she didn't pass the writing portion of the test. During our session together, Christina was able to browse through Peterson's 2014 GED ebook to catch up on the many changes with the GED since the last time she took it. She also took a math practice test using the great database BrainFuse, which recorded her results and explained her incorrect answers. She also wanted to know if she needed to retake the Constitution test again and actually found the answer herself using the laptop and instructions on how to request her transcript. The general feeling I took away from Christina's experience with the laptop, besides the information she got, is that she gained more confidence in the fact that she could take and pass the GED test. Her final words to me after our session were, you know what, I can do this. So now Sarah gonna tell you about her user experience with the laptop. Thanks, Kim. I also worked with my community representative to get feedback on our laptop. For my representative, I worked with uh, Tina Raymond Carter, the Director of Education at a Safe Haven. And for all of you who I'm sure do not know, a Safe Haven is a not-for-profit social enterprise that helps people aspire, transform, and sustain their lives as they transition from homelessness to self-sufficiency with pride and purpose. And it is located in the North Lawndale neighborhood in Chicago. Last December, when we identified our project, I knew that Ms. Carter would be a very valuable asset in our entire journey. She was kind enough to set up a meeting for me with three of her adult educators at a safe haven. These three women watched my demonstration and also spent time just kind of messing around with the laptops, and they offered a lot of really great feedback. The biggest thing they told me is that we needed to simplify our language. Um, they felt we were much too wordy and that we needed to be as explicit as possible when describing all of the resources. Um, also, they told me that we needed to get rid of one of our start screens. Initially, we had two screens, and the first screen kind of told you about the GED laptop, and they said, oh no, they're never even gonna look at this. They're gonna go on Facebook at this point, so no. <laughs> so we adhered to that, and when, as a team, when we got together, the rest of the teammates kind of found the same information. Um, they also set me up with a student, Ruben, who was able to give me his feedback, and he really enjoyed using the laptop, especially BrainFuse. So for those of you who are looking for a great resource, BrainFuse is a wonderful database. Um, he said he liked the idea of the laptop, and he would check one out at the library to prepare for the test. And he also gave some great insight. We included a SurveyMonkey um, survey at the end to kind of think, like, see what they felt about the laptop. And I said, oh, well, you, would you like to take the survey? And he said, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to take that. And I was sort of surprised at how negative I, he was. And I said, well, why not? He was like, well, I don't want a free Walmart gift card or something. And I said, oh, it was not very clear what the survey is about. Again, the need to be more explicit was brought to our attention. I also had another opportunity to sit down with another adult educator in the neighborhood where I work. Um, I work in the Albany Park neighborhood and across the street is the Albany Park Community Center and I was able to talk to Mr. Michael Mantos, the Director of Education, um, Programs and Data and he had similar feedback basically about the language that we used and making it more user friendly but he was also really excited about working with his students with the laptop. And another development we had with our community representatives is Tony um, has been working with his community advisor to work on a partnership between the local community college and the library so that the library could offer off-site GED classes that would be taught by a GED educator. So now we would like to offer you a very special presentation and you may remember this video from our first time together in, in March. Hey Sarah, how are you today? Hey Tony, how's it going? Okay, okay, you, you look tired today. Yeah, you know, it's just been one of those days. What happened? A lot of GED questions again. I hear you with those. I had this one patron. Hi, how can I help you today? Looking for the GED books. Sure, let me just check if we have any in today. No, 
I'm sorry, it looks like they're all checked out. Damn. You don't have any last week. Did you get any of those really good e bucks back? You know, I don't have any, but I do have a new resource I'd like to tell you about. It has a GED ebook and a bunch of other great resources to help you study. Would you like to use this? Can I? Really? Yeah, yes, this is just for you. This is great. Another Thanks. success there story. You know. so, so another round of applause for our yeah. live. <laughs> So, um, we feel good about this project. Yeah. Um, we feel that it has currency, relevancy. We feel that it's in the best traditions of librarianship. We're using technology, but we're relying on our, our inbred sense of values. We're trying to organize and compile information that can be readily used by a underserved group of patrons that we have. We really feel good that this model that we've put together we think can be used to grow and seed and be replicated at any library that, that you may be working at, whether you're in an urban setting, a suburban setting, or a rural setting. So at this point in time, I'd like to ask a question. How many of you in the audience at your libraries have a GED um, preparation site or some program that you offer? Show of hands? Well, that's, that's encouraging. Would anyone like to to say a little bit about their program in particular. It's okay if you don't want to, please. Well, I have um, a community, he works for a district, but he is a community liaison, specifically in the Latino community. So he works with um, Latino parents from my school and, and through the district, and they come in and take classes from him. And so something like this could be really quite powerful and helpful and supportive. Efforts, I'm sure. Great, great. Um, at this point in time, does anyone have any questions of us uh, about this project? Um, Is it handicap accessible? You know, that's something that has been in the back of our minds and we quite haven't slayed that beast yet. Um, we, we know that that's a consideration, um, but um, we just haven't really uh, tackled that monster yet. Uh, how do you take care of security of the laptops as uh, far as making sure that whoever checks them out, don't, they don't do anything on the back end that kind of like screws with the image on the computer? Well, that's a great, that's a great lead-in question. Uh, so uh, one of the early challenges that we had in this project uh, was we were originally contemplating the use of tablets as opposed to laptops. And when we brought this idea to our administration at the Chicago Public Library. Um, naturally, there were some concerns about um, just the logistical issues about this. So we were advised or, or guided in the direction of laptops because the library currently has a policy where we loan laptops within our facilities. So there was some logistical procedures in place already for laptop use. Um, Going forward, I would hope that the library will maybe consider the idea that um, hardware like this can be used by a patron outside the library. And we are making some steps in that direction in the sense that just recently, um, the Chicago Public Library received a grant, a Knight Foundation grant, uh, for hotspots for people to bring home to their, their home facilities that don't have internet. So we, we hope that these two events kind of dovetail and that we progress in that respect. Questions? Yes, sir. Have you done outreach to other communities in the sense of taking that out as a like technology zoo for a conference or symposium of where the adult educators might congregate? We haven't yet, but um, last spring I was able to go to an adult educator conference in the city, so we haven't, I mean, if, if I'm going to be totally honest, we've only had about a month and a half with the laptop as it stands, so going forward next spring we hope to be able to share it more readily with more adult educators. So our feedback right now is sort of limited, but we're hoping that it can sort of blossom and bloom 
and grow not only like within our library but within the city too. So. Yeah. But you could have done this on a tablet. Um, we, we, um, <laughs> we, we can do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're really confident. Technically speaking. I just yeah. really think if someone wanted to replicate it with a tablet, they could. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there were some system requirements sure. that we had internally yeah. that um, maybe were a hindrance at this particular point in time. Uh, going forward, I don't think that'll right. be an issue, but um, there is a element of living in the present. Sure. So um, I, I think we all feel that ultimately what we hope happens within our own institution is that uh, there's a buy-in, and I think there already has been. We've received a lot of support from all you wonderful people, but from our own senior staff too. Uh, and I think this is something that's considered a, uh, a driving point for the library. So I don't know if this particular product will be the result. But I'm very hopeful that something sure. similar sure. will be adopted. It looks like you laid it out well enough that it could be replicated on a tablet. I mean, you know, it wouldn't take a big leap of faith to move that design to the tablet. Right. And Lynn was our, our <laughs> technical expert here about, um, you know, getting things uploaded. And, sure. and, and it was just it was just wonderful. It's a table created yeah. on a Word document. And well, then it was saved as a PDF. So if you can do that, you can put it on a tablet. Okay. That was my question. What interface did you use to, to or what, what did you use to build your interface? And that's as simple as it gets. It was very... When you took a laptop out to one of the users, does a person come with it to kind of explain it and walk them through it? <laughs> <laughs> did you, you find that you are feeling kind of self-sufficient <laughs> with the resources you have designed it and they have a lot of questions? I'm going to turn that over to one of our community feedback. Yeah. That's something that when we worked, we worked with the with yeah. the representatives, so we were always there. And our hope is for our system. Our our our, our big plan would would be being able to have these laptops move around the system, and hopefully having some sort of programming element accompany, and then that way the librarians sure. would be able to support it. So you know, being able to have like a a, a program one night, you know, come and use this laptop, a training session. You know, one of our, our biggest um, hurdles that we really dealt with when coming up with our project was there's a lot of people who need to take the GED, and they are all over across the board in terms of technology skills. And so we really had to let go of the fact of helping every single GED candidate because some of them, you know, have never used a computer, and this might not be the best place for them to start. They really do have to start at one of our centers. So we, we want to really help people who have a little bit more computer literacy just a little bit, you know, being comfortable just opening it and then getting more comfortable using the laptop. So, but yeah, that's that's our hope of where it'll, where it'll apply to. Sir? And hope again, just outreach again, mm -hmm. um, with that, I noticed that you said you did see that there was a user need for getting GED resources at your library. Do you have entities as a consideration now start to funnel them to you as a consideration? Or is it just, okay, we just do it as a need for people who are already in the library. Would you go out and say, yes, tell people that we do provide this service? Yes, I, I mean, I think the second um, scenario. Um, in my own personal experience with this, I'm working with a community college. Um, not only to get their input in terms of content that their instructors have developed, but you know, to get their students to come into the library to check out what we have available. And this has really kind of blossomed recently into discussions about having, as Sarah mentioned, the community college come into the library to offer off-site classes that may be offered at more convenient times for certain users. Our, our feeling is, is that um, prospective GED students or current students have many stressors and, and, and they may not always be able to go to a community college for a class, devote the time that's necessary to take a organized curriculum. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a little bit of, of, of outreach, we're inviting people into our facilities as well. So, I mean, if you wanted to dream big, you could show up at a, a GED tra uh, training center and say, have a card drive. Right. 
give people library cards and start passing out uh, laptops. That's the size that you could do. I don't know if it'll happen. Again, we're all around Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we've been doing too is, you know, we're a really large system. We have 80 branches. So um, we've been trying to educate our peers because, you know, the other librarians, when we started this, we didn't know it. We were like, the GED, take, oh, it's on, oh, okay. This is a different project altogether. So we've been talking about at our meetings, talking to our colleagues, you know, at our system-wide meetings, talking about what we're doing. So that way, they have the ability to talk to us. And so we've, it's just opening up the conversation about what this is. So hopefully when it, when it is born in the system, everyone will be able to I think it was a question in the back. Well, actually, I wanted to put you to work. We have 16 huh. laptops and six desktops at our facility that serve GED students. Would you guys help us like, put that stuff on our, on our laptops if I get permission from my team? Yes. Sure. Yeah, we'd be happy to. That'd be wonderful. They, they, you know, it's wonderful. It'd be really weird if we said no right now. <laughs> <laughs> information is, is up on the screen and I think that may be in a handout that hopefully you received on your way in and thanks to the Illinois State Library people for arranging for that for us. Um, but we're going to be here, we're going to be over the next couple of days and of course we're just a click away so we hope to hear from you. Um, it's been a very rewarding and um, enlightening process for us. So. Thank you.